Now let's try to find the input impedance of a basic transmission line setup. So let's start by drawing that out. So for we're going to start out with a generator, just like we always do. And it's going to have its own source impedance. We're going to send it down a transmission line with the characteristic impedance of Z0. And there's going to be a load on the other end that we're trying to deliver the signal to. And what we want to do is we want to be able to find Z in. So this Z in is basically what the, what the input signal is going to see at this end of the transmission line. Now knowing this Z in is critical because when we want to draw the equivalent circuit of what the sinusoid input signal sees, uh, that is just like what we were doing in the time domain, what it's going to end up seeing is this input impedance. And so we'd use, you would use that to figure out what the amplitude is of that input signal that actually goes through the transmission line. Uh, to do this analysis, we're going to use this uh, new, this alternate coordinate system that I introduced in other lectures where we'll, we'll use the letter U, but it's the same as Z, except the origin is set to the load side instead of the, instead of the generator side. So in this case, uh, we'll set this location to be u equals 0 and this location to be u equals minus l. And the reason for that is to just to decide where you want to stick in the coordinate system being equal to 0 and make your equation look a little bit cleaner. So we can define what we're going to call the wave impedance, which I'll call zw. That is basically the impedance that this thing sees uh, anywhere uh, on this transmission line. So make it a location dependent. And so the wave impedance at any point is still the total voltage that you see divided by the total current that you see. So the total voltage would just be the foregoing wave, which is going to be e to the mi minus j beta u, uh, and a backward going wave, which is v naught minus e to the minus j beta u all over, and then the current, foregoing current, which is I naught plus e to the minus j beta u plus I naught minus e to the j beta u. And apologies, this should be a plus because it's going in the negative u direction. So we can then do a bunch of substitutions to decrease the number of variables based on information we know. We know that the negative wave is going to be related to the positive wave voltage by a factor of gamma. Similarly, uh, we also know the, how, the relationship between the current and the voltage. So for the positive going wave, it's going to be V naught plus divided by Z naught. And for the current going in the negative direction, it's going to be V naught minus divided by Z naught with this minus sign, right? So you don't, don't ever forget that minus sign. I, I use that crying analogy so many times, and yet uh, every semester I still cry. In addition, we also have the reflection coefficient. So the reflection coefficient is nu minus old over nu plus old. And remember, this is the same concept as what we had before, except now these are complex numbers. So if we substitute all of these facts in here and do a bunch of manipulation, uh, we can arrive at a general expression for the wave impedance. So if we plug all of this in, we're going to get find that the input impedance, that the wave impedance at any location, u, can be written as z naught cl minus j z naught tangent of beta u and also z naught minus j z l so we're just going to switch switch the z naught and z l in the denominator tangent beta u 
And so and once we have this expression, this is where the coordinate system comes in. But if we plug in u is equal to minus l, we can arrive at the, the expression for the input impedance. And when we plug this in, remember that uh, tangent of negative l is going to be equal to minus tangent of l, or whatever variable you want to put in there. So plugging that in, we're going to get our input impedance equation that is one of our primary take homes. It's going to be equal to z naught, zl plus j z naught, tangent of beta l all over z naught. And then again, you switch the location. So z naught plus j zl tangent of beta l. And this is the key take home equation. And uh, this, this will work for any length L that you end up choosing for the transmission line. So let's clean this up and take a look at a few specific scenarios, namely open, short, and then a quarter wavelength and half wavelength uh, segment of transmission line. Let's start by taking a look at what happens if the load is a short. In that case, ZL is going to be equal to zero. So we'll plug that into this Z in expression. So Z in is going to be equal to Z naught times zero plus J Z naught tangent beta L all over Z naught plus zero. So then these Z naughts cancel out and you are left with the input impedance is equal to J Z naught tangent beta L. Let's think about what that looks like. What's the, what are the extreme values of tangent if you were to have full control over what's in here? That's right, it's gonna be plus or minus infinity, right? So if we were to, if we were to plot that out, it's gonna look a little bit like this. Where this is your length and this is your Z in. And this is all, this is all imaginary, there's a J there. So what that means is that as, as you change your length, you can achieve any value of reactance between minus infinity and plus infinity just by tweaking the length. So you get pure reactance and uh, again, uh, it's adjustable to any value that you want, assuming you have really good control of the length, right? Now let's move on and compare that to when ZL is an open. If ZL is an open, that means that ZL goes to infinity. So we'll take the limit of ZL goes to infinity of our Z in expression, which is going to be the limit of ZL goes to infinity of Z naught ZL plus J Z naught tangent beta L all over Z naught plus J ZL tangent beta L. And when you, when you look at this, uh, if ZL goes to infinity, that means we could ignore this term and this term. These, uh, the, the ZLs cancel out. And what you're left with is minus J Z naught over tangent beta L or minus J Z naught cotangent beta L. Now, if we plot that, let's see what that looks like. So you can just take the inverse of this and then also plot, uh, also don't forget to add the negative sign. And what you end up getting is the same, same expression, but shifted a bit, right? Uh, actually, I should clarify. Well, just to keep it simple, let's just make the horizontal axis beta L. In this case, you have this null here at zero and you're gonna have another one here, pi, 
And so as you change, if you adjust L so that it, when it's multiplied by beta, you get close to pi half or minus pi half, you get plus or minus infinity. In this case, uh, you start out at negative infinity when beta L is equal to zero. And then instead, you get a null at pi half. And then at pi, you get your, your next uh, minus infinity plus infinity value. So what you see here is that it's, it's the same thing as what you have with the short circuit, uh, except now that now instead of just starting out centered at the origin, you're centered at pi half. And so you, depending on which direction you, you want your reactants to be, uh, you, can, you can have a better shot at gaining the value that you want. And so this is quite helpful because you can get any kind of reactants you want and an open or a short in a circuit quite often is much easier to make than an actual inductor capacitor. So this is one way that as far as the transmission line is concerned, you can make kind of a, a virtual inductor or a virtual capacitor, which can be hugely useful for impedance matching. In line with applications related to this input impedance, let's look at what happens when your L is a quarter wavelength-ish multiple. So specifically, when L is going to be, can be written in the form of 2n plus 1 over 4 times lambda. When we have this condition, now beta L is going to be equal to beta is 2 pi over lambda. If the length is, let's just look at n equals 0, so just lambda over 4, quarter wave, then you'll get beta L is equal to pi half. Now let's plug that into Z in. So in that case, Z in is going to be equal to tangent of pi half. Tangent of pi half is, in this case, positive infinity, right? If we go back and look at this. So then we'll have to take the limit of that tangent quantity going to infinity. We'll replace that with a smiley face. So we have Z0, ZL plus J, Z0, smiley face, all over Z0 plus J, ZL, smiley face. So if you take ZL, the smiley face goes infinity, you can cross out these terms, and you'll find that Z in is equal to Z0 squared divided by ZL. So again, we'll say in the quarter wave scenario, you get an input impedance that's equal to Z naught squared over ZL. Now this is hugely useful. Why? Because if you can engineer your length such that you achieve this criteria of beta L equal to pi half, if you also have control over what Z naught is, then you can change what the impedance looks like over here. And if you can engineer that, then you can make sure that this has an impedance match with everything that came before it. So one of the immediate practical applications is, let's say you have a transmission line, you have your source, it goes in, and then you have your load here, and it's not matched, but you know what frequency you're working with. Uh, one of the things that you can do that is kind of nifty is you can then insert a length of transmission line over here with this Z0 prime and if this is matching that criteria of a multiple of a quarter wavelength, or odd multiple of a quarter wavelength, and you take this Z0 prime and change it so that this overall Z in is going to be equal to the Z0 of this transmission line, then what you end up seeing is the wave's gonna come in, it's gonna see the Z0, and once it reaches here, it's going to see Z in as as the scenery when it comes out. And if Z in is engineered to be equal to Z naught, you now have a match. So all the power will end up going across. And so this is another way that you can do transmission line matching. But one of the issues, one of the issues that, that makes this hard to implement in every situation is you can see this is wavelength dependent, right? So you kind of have to pick and choose a particular frequency that this operates well at. And as you deviate from that frequency, the impedance matching won't work as well. 
Before we wrap up, let's look at another situation that has a lot of applications, which is the half wavelength scenario. So a general form of the criteria is when the length is 2n plus 1, but this time we're going to say over 2 lambda. In this situation, let, let's start by looking at the n equals 0. So let's say the length is 1 half lambda. In this case, beta L will be equal to 2 pi over lambda times lambda over 2, which is going to be equal to pi. So now when we go back to our little tangent beta L plot, remember that at pi, uh, tangent beta L is going to be equal to 0. So we substitute 0 in for tangent beta L. We'll get z in is equal to z naught, z l plus, and tangent beta l is 0. So 0 over z naught plus 0, z naught plus 0. And so the z naughts cancel out. And now you're left with the fact that the input impedance is going to be equal to z l. So this is kind of an interesting result. What that means is that if we are standing at the input of this transmission line and our, our phaser is coming in, what we actually see, we don't actually see the Z naught. All we see is the ZL. So in other words, it kind of behaves as if the transmission line doesn't exist. And the transmission line, this part is almost is basically transparent. And so that that has some useful feature. That's a useful feature because in some situations, let's say you have a radar or a detection system and you want to either send a signal out or have a signal come in at a particular frequency. But at the same time, for some reason or another, say it's in a harsh environment or uh, maybe it's on some kind of a moving platform, you want to shield it from the outside environment. But you still want to be able to see what's going on outside. And so if one of the ways that you can make this into a window where the waves of interest can readily pass through is by making it this half wave criteria. And so we've, to summarize, we, we have, uh, we've developed a formulation to calculate the input impedance and we looked at four situations. First is a short or an open. In both cases, you can see that what you get is a pure reactance term and if you're able to tune the length, you can generate artificially generate a reactance of any value between plus or minus infinity. And the, the, whether you whether you want to use a short or an open, it kind of depends on whether you whether you particularly want a positive or negative reactance. The other situation of interest is the is the quarter wave length is the quarter wavelength setup where in this case, you have the input impedance to be some relationship between z naught squared and ZL. And that means that if you can engineer this z naught squared, you can actually make this uh, segment that will change the impedance from this point onwards to match what preceded it. So in this case, you can imagine a, a setup where you insert a custom piece of transmission line that makes it so that this matches your initial long transmission line, and that is one way that you can reduce reflections. And then finally, the half wavelength situation where the input impedance will just be equal to ZL. So this would be a situation where, you, where it doesn't really see the, transmi the transmission line at all and acts kind of like a window where your source just directly goes to the load and behaves as if the transmission line isn't there. So four different setups and they each have their own applications.